Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in d and I am the Dragonfly in question, Dragonfly9078, and today we'll be building Aqua from Konosuba. So a bit of background, Aqua is a goddess who is in charge of guiding the souls of the dead to the afterlife. I'm not entirely sure why a water goddess is in charge of this, but hey, maybe they're short-staffed. She meets Kazuma, a recently dead soul, and offers to reincarnate him in another world with some special power to fight the Devil King. Apparently the people from that world are choosing not to be reincarnated because of the dismal state of their world, so this is the, uh, the afterlife's current solution. He agrees to go, but chooses to bring Aqua herself with him after she makes fun of the humiliating way in which he died. She's forced to go with him to the other world, and can only return once the Devil King is defeated. So what do we want out of this build? Well, Aqua doesn't have much in the way of offensive power, but her status of being a literal goddess makes her a top-notch support caster, with healing, buffing, resurrection, curse-breaking, really, you name it, she's got it. Next, she'll need to assert her godhood, with the symbols of her office, the ability to purify undead, everything that makes a good anime god. Finally, and most importantly, she needs to be the center of attention. Aqua is the best, and everyone needs to know it. Looking at ability scores, I'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. If you're rolling for stats, keep an eye on wisdom and charisma for multiclassing. We'll start off with a 13 in strength. Aqua doesn't engage in combat very often, but when she does, it's with her bare fists. Dexterity is next at 10. We don't really need it for anything, and Aqua has spent her life lazing on her throne eating chips. Constitution will be 14. Gods tend to be a little bit more resilient than normal people, followed by an 8 for intelligence. Aqua isn't the sharpest bulb in the shed, and is called out in-universe for having below-average intelligence. Wisdom is a little higher than I'd like at 12, but we do need it to be at least 13 for multiclassing, and we'll finish off with our 15 in charisma. Aqua tends to excel in social situations, and it's going to be our main spellcasting ability, so we need it to be high. Goddess isn't a race in D&D, but Asamar are demigods, and that's pretty close, so that's what we'll make Aqua. All Asamar get plus 2 to Charisma, and Protector Asamar also get plus 1 to Wisdom, putting us at just enough Wisdom for our multiclassing requirement. We also get Dark Vision out to 60 feet, but we're the only member of our party that actually has natural Dark Vision, so it's a good thing we also learn the Light Cantrip. Asamar have Celestial Resilience, giving them resistance to Radiant and Necrotic damage, as well as Healing Hands, letting them heal a creature they touch for an amount of HP equal to their level as an action once per day. Finally, Protector Asamar get Radiant Soul at 3rd level. They can transform as an action once per day to get a flying speed of 30 feet and to let them deal extra Radiant damage equal to their level to creatures they hit with an attack or spell once per turn. Aqua doesn't have wings, but she does have her raiment, which she magically manifests when she gets serious. And hey, she's even actually been seen using it to fly, so that works. Now, Goddess may not be a race, but we are building our own background, so let's call it the Goddess background take religion to get blackmail material on your fellow deities, and performance to sing a song about said blackmail material. Starting off as a sorcerer, we get two skills off the sorcerer list. I'd pick Arcana and Intimidation. Aqua has a literally divine soul, so divine soul sorcerer feels appropriate. Divine soul sorcerers get to choose spells from both the cleric list and the sorcerer list as they level up, but they still use their charisma to cast those spells, making them perfect for an archpriest with low wisdom. First level Divine Soul Sorcerers get a spell based on their deity's alignment. I'd peg Aqua as either Neutral Good or Chaotic Good, so our choices are Cure Wounds, Bane, and Protection from Evil and Good. Now, these are all on the Cleric list, so we can get them all anyway, but I'd say Cure Wounds is probably the pick here. They're also favored by the gods, meaning they can add 2d4 to a missed attack roll or failed saving throw that they make once per rest. Sorcerers get a Font of Magic at 2nd level, which is a pool of sorcery points that they can use to fuel various abilities. Flexible Casting lets them expend points to recover spell slots, and expend spell slots to recover points. Empowering Reserves lets them expend 2 points to get advantage on an ability check on their turn. Imbuing Touch makes a weapon count as magical for 1 minute to overcome resistances. And Sorcerer's Fortitude gives them XD4 temporary hit points, where X is the number of points they expend to use the ability. Sorcery points can also be used for meta magic to enhance their spells. As a 13th level sorcerer, Aqua has access to three meta magic options. Distant spell doubles the range of a spell, or gives a touch spell a range of 30 feet. Cure wounds is a touch spell, so this lets us do some better healing from distance than, say, healing word. Extended spell doubles the duration of a spell up to a maximum of 24 hours, 
and Heightened Spell gives the target of a spell disadvantage on their first save against that spell. Take a shot every time I say the word spell. Don't do that. You will probably not survive. The last thing that the Divine Soul Sorcerers can use their points for is Empowered Healing. Once per turn, when you or an ally within five feet rolls dice for a healing spell, you can expend one point to re-roll any number of those dice. Aqua gets three ability score improvements as a sorcerer, and they're all going to go to feats. Performer gives plus one to charisma and feeds Aqua's need for attention by letting her add double her proficiency bonus to performance checks. She can also try to distract someone while performing. If her performance check beats their insight check, they have disadvantage on perception and investigation checks until she stops performing. Aqua loves to drink, so she spends a lot of time in taverns, and has almost certainly gotten into a fight or two. If only there were a feat about brawling in a tavern. I would probably give plus one to constitution, let Aqua use a d4 for her unarmed strikes, give her proficiency with improvised weapons, and maybe let her grapple people with a bonus action after she hits them with an unarmed strike or improvised weapon. That would be great. For our last feat, we'll take Practiced Expert, which gives Aqua plus one to any ability score. I'd bump constitution up to 16 one skill proficiency, and one skill expertise. Whining and begging counts as persuasion, and Aqua is a master of that, so take persuasion for your proficiency and religion as your expertise, because religion is an intelligence-based skill check and a goddess should really know about the hierarchy of angels. A quick reminder, Aqua can know about the hierarchy of angels, but you should not. The structure of heaven and the angelic organizational chart are privileged information. Angels do not exist and any sightings of them should be reported immediately to the city council. Our first multi-class is going to be Cleric. It seems a little odd to me for a goddess to be a cleric in her own service, but Aqua has always been very self-serving. First level clerics pick a domain, and although Aqua guides the recently dead, she's actually a water goddess. Water isn't a domain, so I chose nature. Nature clerics get proficiency in animal handling, nature, or survival. I'd go with nature. Aqua tends to know things about the natural world, but animals don't usually like her, and she doesn't show any skill in tracking. They also learn a cantrip from the druid list, and have certain spells constantly prepared. Druid craft lets you make a harmless sensory effect, light a campfire, or predict the weather. Animal friendship charms an animal, and speak with animals lets you talk to them. Bark skin makes a creature's AC 16 at a minimum, for up to an hour depending on your concentration and Spike Growth makes a 20-foot radius section of ground into difficult terrain that also deals 2d4 piercing damage for every 5 feet that a creature moves within. Second level clerics get to channel their divinity once per rest. Aqua can canonically use Turn Undead, which is the main reason we went into cleric in the first place. Turn Undead forces all undead within 30 feet of Aqua to make a wisdom save. If they fail, they have to spend their turns trying to get as far from Aqua as they can for one minute or until they take damage. Nature clerics can also use their channel divinity to charm all beasts and plant creatures within 30 feet of them that fail a wisdom save for one minute or until they take damage. Our last ability score improvement will actually go into improving an ability score, as we round off our charisma to 20. We'll finish up this build with three levels of warlock. Celestial warlocks learn the Sacred Flame and Light cantrips. We already have Light from being an Asimar, but Sacred Flame is a useful attacking cantrip that deals radiant damage to a creature that fails a dexterity save. It also ignores cover for the purposes of that save, which is very useful. They also get Healing Light, a pool of d6s equal to 1 plus their Warlock level that refills on a long rest. As a bonus action, they can expend any number of dice from their pool to heal a creature within 60 feet of them for the amount rolled on those dice. We really dipped into Warlock for the Pact Boon, though. Pact of the Blade lets you summon a melee weapon into your hand as an action. You're proficient with that weapon, and it counts as magical for overcoming resistances. I'd say that Aqua's staff counts as a quarter staff, but I'd love it if we could cast spells through it. Luckily, we also get two Eldritch Invocations. Improved Pact Weapon gives the staff plus one to attack and damage rolls, and lets it act as an arcane focus. Personally, I'd argue that it also acts as a holy symbol for her cleric spells, but really, she's a goddess, so isn't all of her a symbol of herself? That's really up to your DM. Our second Eldritch Invocation will be Eldritch Sight, letting Aqua cast Detect Magic at will without expanding a spell slot. Goddess senses are better than human senses. I don't make the rules. Looking over at spellcasting, we ended up as a 17th level caster with an extra two second level slots from our Warlock levels. Charisma is maxed out, but Wisdom is very much not. All three of our classes give us a handful of cantrips. 
Most important are the party trick skills, of course, so take Control Flames, Shape Water, Mold Earth, Prestidigitation, and Dancing Lights from the Sorcerer list, Thaumaturgy from the Cleric list, and Minor Illusion from the Warlock list. All of these, plus Druidcraft from earlier, are very versatile spells that can make minor sensory effects or illusory sounds or images. You'll also take Mending to patch up small cracks and tears in objects, Virtue to give a creature a few temporary hit points, Spare the Dying to stabilize creatures, Guidance to enhance your party's skill checks, and Friends to enhance your run. As a 13th level sorcerer, Aqua knows 13 spells from either the Sorcerer or Cleric list since she's a Divine Soul Sorcerer. To make all tremble before her and fall asleep, Sleep is a goddess's requiem of love and sorrow. Any its strikes will perish. Enhance Ability gives a creature advantage on one kind of ability check. If you pick Strength, it also doubles their carrying capacity. If you pick Dexterity, they can fall for 20 feet without taking fall damage. And if you pick Constitution, they gain 2d6 temporary hit points. Speak with Dead lets Aqua speak to dead bodies, which technically anyone can do, but this actually lets them answer back when she needs to convince Cosma to accept a resurrection spell. Speaking of which, Aqua has three different spells that can revive a dead person. Revivify only works on someone who died in the last minute, Raise Dead can revive someone who died in the last 10 days, and Resurrection can revive someone who died within the last 100 years. Resurrection will also restore any lost body parts. Perfect if your friend has been, say, decapitated or dissolved. As a water goddess, Aqua can use Tidal Wave to drop a huge wave on a 30 foot by 10 foot area, knocking any creatures in the area prone and dealing 4d8 bludgeoning damage, unless they pass a dexterity save. She can also use Wall of Water to give disadvantage to ranged attacks and weakened fire attacks, or Control Water to make waves, whirlpools, or dry land in a 100 foot cube of water. Dispel Magic, Dispel Evil and Good, and Greater Restoration can ward off curses, spells, and other negative effects and Heal restores 70 HP to a single creature within 60 feet of you. Aqua only gets four Warlock spells, and none of them are super in character, but Distort Value is good if she wants to, say, pass off some substandard lettuce as pricey cabbages. As a fourth level cleric, Aqua can only access cleric spells of first or second level, but she can use the entire list of both. A couple of highlights are Purify Food and Drink, which can be ritual cast repeatedly to purify an entire lake, Lesser Restoration to Cure Diseases, and Wrathful Smite, a lethal fist that carries a goddess's love and sorrow. Any it strikes will perish. Now that the build is finished, the question is, how good is it? Well, you have a huge amount of healing, with everything from cure wounds to heal, all of which can be done at range with Distant Spell, as can your Curse Breaking with Dispel Magic and Greater Restoration. You also have a total of 15 different cantrips, making you ready for almost any situation that can come up. You especially excel in social situations, with a maxed out charisma modifier, guidance, friends, enhanceability, proficiency in intimidation and persuasion, and expertise in performance to let you talk your way out of practically any situation. For weaknesses, your AC is 10. Anything that tries to hit you is going to hit you. You can mitigate that a bit with bark skin, but that takes up your concentration, and you'll probably be standing back since you can heal at a distance anyway. You're also a bit lacking in the damage department. Your best attacking options are Sacred Flame, which does nothing if the target makes their save, and Tidal Wave, which does the same amount of damage as Sacred Flame, but takes a third level slot to cast. Finally, from a flavor perspective, I would have liked to have one more level of Cleric for Destroy Undead, but dropping a level of Sorcerer would have lost Resurrection, and dropping a level of Warlock would lose the ability to summon your staff, which is obviously far more important. Overall though, Aqua is really only good at three things, and those are Healing, talking to people, and party tricks. And really, I think we nailed those pretty well. I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any feedback or suggestions of characters to build, please leave them in the comments below. I do have a backlog of characters to get through, but I don't have a specific order to them, so if I get an interesting suggestion, there's no reason I couldn't do it sooner. Thank you for watching, friends, and I will see you all later.